No, no, it's fine. Um, okay, so, shall we begin? Okay. Welcome to a special Western edition of... Western Australian edition. Yeah, that too. <laughs> of uh, our sciencey pub chat thing. Uh, we have a special guest today. Associate Professor of University of Queensland, uh, Tamara Davis. And so who, who, is, who is also uh, an amazing frisbee player. And yeah, actually Australian, representing. Australian national team, ultimate yeah. frisbee. What's the team called? Australian national team. Oh, yeah. we had the. Um, um, Cause the you the flying, and stuff. We had the. We were the flying foxes. Flying foxes. Yeah, world champs. Nice. Yeah. It's very impressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, so we're going to talk to Tam about uh, what she works on, why it's cool. Uh, so, 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 tell us, tell us in you know, three, four words. What is it that you study? What do you do? Three, four words only, Tam. The universe. That's two. Okay, plain old universe. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. good. Galaxies. I like it. Yeah. Laws of physics. That can be one word. That was one word. Yeah, good. Excellent. Yeah. So, so we try and use the, the universe to figure out how fundamental physics works. So how do you do that exactly? What exactly? What are you looking at specifically? Uh, so I've been involved in this survey called Wiggle, um, which is looking at the distribution of galaxies in the universe. Okay. Sorry, can I just stop you there? Yes, yes. What does Wiggle stand for? It doesn't actually stand for anything. Oh, does it not? Oh, no. Wow. Okay. Um, but the reason Wiggles is the name is because what we look at is we look at the pattern of galaxies, and the really cool thing is the pattern of galaxies in the sky is not random. They might look like they've just been sort of scattered randomly in the sky, but it's not the case. There's significant patterns, and those patterns, if you map them out, actually look like Wiggles. So, wait, 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 what do you mean? What do you mean the patterns look like Wiggles? Like what? What? What pattern is this? Okay, so there's to, to understand the pattern in the galaxies, you really should go back a step to how yeah. these patterns form. Okay. And wow. this, you know, you in, in the beginning, in the beginning, you, you've heard that sound waves can't travel in space. No one can hear you scream. No one yeah. can hear you yeah. scream. Okay. And, you know, Star Trek now doesn't have any sound as the as the uh, spacecraft travel through the vacuum of space. Well, the thing is, if you go right back to the very, very early universe, yeah. space was not a vacuum. Um, everything was so tightly compressed together mm. okay. um, that sound waves traveled everywhere. So yeah, we have the expanding universe, and, and these days the universe is, has expanded to quite large sizes. So, so if, you were, if you were in that primordial fireball, you could hear the screen. Exactly. You, if you, as you burn them up. Yeah, you, as, you yeah. Burn, exactly. as you disintegrate in the primordial fireball, the screaming is audible. Yes. Okay, just, good as, as ever, don't yeah. try this at home, kids. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. General science. Making Big Bangs at home is not so good. But if you go back close to the Big Bang, yeah. you had um, you had all this hot gas, and okay, so humans couldn't exist because atoms hadn't really sure. formed yet. Sure. But one thing that did, did exist was sound waves. So okay. you basically had this really hot gas, and there's sound waves going everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Now, at some point, those sound waves stopped propagating. And the reason is because if you have lots of things close together, sound waves are, are nothing more than um, molecules or atoms or particles bouncing off each other. Okay. Um, so you have this impression, yep. rarefaction yep. thing going on. Um, that, that requires a certain pressure, and as the universe expanded, the pressure drops. Okay. So okay. at some point, the universe got to a big enough state that the, the likelihood that one particle would hit another Dropped, and it particularly light like would be bashed into other stuff. So you basically got to a point where the sound waves couldn't efficiently move anymore. So it becomes more like a vacuum, and yeah. then you can't hear the screaming anymore. Yeah. So right. universe it's more of a whimper. Yeah. Universe. Oh, okay. Great. So good. Yeah. yeah. But that. But what happened is these sound waves. It's like you took the ocean and you just froze it instantly. So the okay. as soon as the sound waves couldn't propagate anymore, yeah. the waves got stuck. In okay. these particular cool. positions. Right. So now you imagine you've got this early universe, it's just the sound waves have stopped propagating. You've got these sort of high density regions where the sound wave was, and low density regions where it was in between yeah, the okay. okay. What happens after then is those high density regions then just start, start collapsing with gravity. Okay. So gravity's, the gravity of that dense region sucks everything in towards it, yeah. and that's where galaxies are. Okay. And, so, and like clusters of galaxies. And, exactly. Okay. Okay. 
So when we look up at the sky and we see the patterns of the galaxies, what we see is the peaks of these early sound waves. So okay. that's why it's called wiggles. Because we're looking at these wiggles. Right. Wow, okay. Awesome. Yeah. 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 It really is. <laughs> like, usually it's just an awful anachronism, but that's actually really good. Yeah. Okay, so now assessing the distribution of the galaxies on the sky. Yeah. And I'm guessing you're going to figure out something like cosmology through yeah. this fundamental note. So basically, why do we care? Yeah, if you like. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I it, care because it's, it's awesome research. Yeah. That's fantastic. But <laughs> the, so, I'll give you time. Okay, so you know, it's, it's sort of curiously interesting fact that we can look at the pattern of galaxies in the universe, but hey, if that's all we could do, then why would we? Sure. The reason this is cool is that we can use those patterns to figure out what the universe is made of. Uh, we can also... Why are you that pattern? Yeah. So... Big claim. Yeah. Okay, so... Think of how how quickly the sound waves could travel in yeah. the early universe. Yeah. It was determined by what stuff was there. Okay. And by stuff, I mean how much light there was, how much radiation there was. How much matter? Oh, oh, pizza. Pizza. Oh, perfect. Oh, pizza. All right. Okay. So we Even the pizza. Yeah. <laughs> um, where were we? We were. What <laughs> the universe is made of? So this yeah. pizza is made of cheese and pumpkin and all sorts good. of yummy stuff. Uh, the universe um, is made of. You can figure out how much radiation there is and dark matter and. All of these things change the pattern that you would see. And now, okay, so, and after the pattern has been formed, how strong gravity is determines how big these clusters are that form. So you have you have this sort of peak in the sound wave. How much uh, stuff that's able to drag in and form into clusters of galaxies is determined by how strong gravity is okay. as much distance. And so that's interesting because we recently discovered that the whole the expansion of the universe is accelerating. So that was that what the Nobel Prize last year. Yeah. Uh, they won the Nobel Prize last year for that. Yeah. Um, which is really funky. You know, it means that gravity is working in reverse when you go to That will be a whole whole other video. Yeah. 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 So uh, we really want to test our laws of gravity. Because clearly what works here on Earth, if you take Pink and yellow sunglasses and drop them. They they go down. They yeah. did. Yeah. yeah. Although um, if it, this is true physics, so we do have to repeat our experiments. Yeah, yeah. One more time. So there we go. Gravity works. Yeah. At least that all. works. Uh, and if you throw it up, it comes back down. What yeah. we've seen with galaxies that is that if you take your your galaxies and they've been thrown apart by the Big Bang, um, right now that it's just they're speeding up. They're, they're, they're moving away from each other. So it's though I've, as though I've thrown this up in the air and it's accelerated on into space. So it's as though they never come back. <laughs> um, okay, so that's weird. So we know that this gravity works in one way in the solar system. Yes. It's attractive here. But it, something appears to be repulsive on the scale of, of the whole universe right. expanding. Yeah. So what we're measuring is the intermediate scale where you're looking at how stuff is forming, so like how galaxies are forming. So that is sort of a distinguishing feature that you, that you distinguish between different theories for what's causing this acceleration of the expansion of the universe. Okay. So that's one reason it's really cool. But there's okay. more. Wow. <laughs> okay. Okay, have you guys heard of neutrinos? Yes. I believe you have. Yes. Well, yes. And they don't go faster than light. They don't go faster than light, no. But they can lose your jaw. <laughs> so, Billions of neutrinos have just passed through you in that second. Yeah. Um, but I'm pretty tough, so I didn't cry. I didn't cry like that. Yeah. No. Match that. You barely noticed. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, so neutrinos passing through us. There's heaps of them out there, but they don't interact with matter very much. That means they weren't actually participating in those sound waves in the early universe very much. Yeah. And if you have more neutrinos, or if you have different types of neutrinos different species of neutrinos, they affect the structure formation in different ways. 
because they basically are moving really fast. Yeah. Yeah. And if you have this dense crop of stuff that is going to eventually like suck other things in and form galaxies, if that if the neutrinos are there, they'll tend to spread out and they'll like spin. and basically destroy any structures that are really small because they basically stream out of these structures and they can't the structures can't hold all the matter together. Mm -hmm. Okay. So like some of that matter is made of neutrinos, and neutrinos can escape, and so they yeah. sort of they sort yeah. of diffuse out that, yeah. that little structure. Yeah. So it's think of it think about it this way: we're actually using the pattern of galaxies that we see out there to learn something about the smallest particles, the lightest particles that we know. Of. So we're, we're measuring the mass of the tiniest particle in the universe by looking at how um, structure forms and this pattern of galaxies that we're seeing. It's pretty impressive. And you can do that just by by finding galaxies, yeah. writing down where they are, yeah. counting them. Yeah, so in practice, all we did was, yeah. like, it's easy to get the two-dimensional information about yeah. where galaxies are in the sky. Yeah. The thing that's really difficult is to figure out how far they are away from us. Right. And so we used the Anglo Australian Telescope, has an instrument called the two degree field um, spectrograph and it has a whole bunch of optical fibers. And basically knowing where the galaxies are on a two dimensional picture, we tell a robot to put an optical fiber at the position of every single one of the galaxies that we want to look at. We get the light one galaxy per optical fiber, take it through to a spectrograph, spread out the colors, see the rainbow that's coming from that galaxy and use that to measure its velocity in general, it's always away because the universe is expanding. Yes. And using that, we can measure how far they are. Right. So right. Because things that are farther away are going faster. Exactly. So you read our yeah. wavelength stretch, everyone yeah. just yeah. just Google Hubble's law, go to Wikipedia. Yeah, redshift. Redshift is good one. Stuff. Yeah. Okay. So, so using that, we basically measured uh, the, how far they are away and made this three dimensional map of the galaxy. So all we have are the positions yeah. of. Yeah. As it turns out, about 230,000 galaxies. Because this was a five year survey on the Anglo Australian Telescope. We had like 220 nights of telescope time. Okay. And lots of ground paper. You could do, you could do yeah. 400 galaxies at a time, basically. So it was, wow. you know, yeah. it's not easy to do. We had, it yeah. basically, it was 30 people for yeah. five years yeah. to get this map of the distribution of galaxies. And the reason that's worked well is now we have, we have information about the number of neutrinos, we can measure the expansion of the universe, we can measure the growth of structure within it. It starts to test Einstein's yeah, theories. That, yeah. Testing Einstein's theory, measuring yeah. particle physics. Uh, awesome. Yeah. And, and, and more about the universe. And you can do all that just, just with a, a map of dot here, dot here, dot here. Yeah. Laws of physics. Yeah. Some very, very clever people. Yes. <laughs> yes. Inclu right, inclu including our, our guest, Tamara. Yep. Yeah. So that's <laughs> cool.